Hey, how's it going? Today we're going to talk about video game collecting. Is it worth it now at the time of age of these days with all digital work and so forth? Let's dive into if you are a game collecting, what to look out for, what makes a video game valuable, or are you doing it just for fun like I do? Here's one of my most valuable games. I paid about, I think, $60 for this, and it's valued at over $100. So goodbye. Except the only thing is, there's no book cover. Let's jump into that. So many may think it's a waste of time or a waste of money to get video games, but you could also commit mass murder. That would probably be worse of a time frame. Silent Hill Shattered Memories jumped from $20 to $300 within the past couple of years. I think that is a pretty good value. According to such as like stock market and so forth, things go up in price and they go down in price as well. Video game collecting is sort of like any other collecting. It's just really up to your passion. And I, myself, love collecting video games. Just like Pokemon, coins, toys, or Lego sets. It's really up to your niche of what you want to do. Some things go up in value according to how rare they are and if they are censored, such as Rule of Rose. Rule of Rose can be priced at a significant price over a couple thousand dollars since it is a very controversial video game depicting young ladies and rapey scenes good job asia other games have bugs in them such as the nintendo classic of the olympic game which is the gold case i don't know the exact name exactly i should probably google that right now but that game is very price worthy it is Priced at either 10,000 to 20,000 according to what range you have if you have like the book cover and the case as well. Another reason can be if it was just a convention such as the Dead Space game or if it was a collector's edition such as the Dead Space game or Fallout 3 where you had your own little pocket watch which was quite exciting. You could tell time like Fallout Boy, like the band. Since every video game is different, a lot of people buy video games for the artwork itself such as the cover art. I love buying video games since I love the nostalgic of it, and then I also love the cover artwork. It is very unique in style, such as these Nintendo video games where the E.T. video game wasn't exactly what the cover was like. Just like a fancy purse, it's according to how it was made and how much was released, such as a video game that was an indie copy. I forgot the name to say the least. Since my girlfriend collects purses that are handcrafted, I'm well aware of pricing of different things. Of course, her stuff is well overpriced according to my stuff since hers is leather and made from an animal, and mine is just artwork from an artist coming from their mind. I also have the pleb I also have the privilege to play the video game, unless it's unopened, and then the value goes up substantially, and then it's up to you if you want to open that baby up. I'm also sitting on a Lego set, which is supposed to go up in value, hopefully. It's semi hard to find, and it's a huge set, and I haven't built it yet, and I haven't even opened the box, which is painstakingly painful, such as like plucking out your eyeballs. Things to look out for in video games, such as, go for games you love, of course. If you don't care about the video game, it, it brings down the value in itself for your own passion and needs. What if you want to play the video game one day? Except, what if the video game is unopened? Then it's quite all right. Then you're just collecting for collecting, such as Rural Rose or Silent Hill Shattered Dreams. Those are just valued high and you can play it on other video game systems. Or a Japanese version of Rural Rose is about 100 bucks rather than the English version, which is a couple thousand. So for <coughs> games also that you want to look out for is black labels or original games. Those are the most valued, such as the PS2 era, they had the black label and then the red label, which is the greatest hits. And those greatest hits editions were less valuable since there was a wide range of them sold. Games with booklet and original box art. You don't want a box art that somebody drew on because it may not be worth anything. Just make sure you get the right stuff. I actually <clears throat> was going to buy a video game and I asked the seller, is this original art? And he said no, he printed it off his printer. And I'm very glad I asked because that would have shot down the value substantially. So just be aware of who you're buying from. Games that have value are more likely hard to find or less product in your country. Such as, I have another game called Rad. 
I don't remember the reason it's called Rad. I think it's Robot Alchemist Discovery Channel. It's a very fun game. It's mostly in Japanese or Asian. It is very rare in America area. Basically a giant anime video game. So it's very rare and I actually was able to find the whole cover art and also the booklet inside and also the original disc as well which was pretty brand new. So those type of video games are very rare and you want to just keep an eye out for them. Another thing that you may want to think about is does it need repairs? Is it worth the time and is it worth the money to fix the thing? If you're well versed in collecting video game consoles, perhaps you can change things up. I've seen amazing video content where there was a sunken PlayStation 1 from the ocean. Somebody cleaned it up and it was brand new. So it's really up to you what you want to do or what you want to spend. Just keep on the hunt. Don't automatically buy into something that you may regret later. And on that note, have a good cleaning kit if you are going to do it. You don't want to do a peanut butter thing from the PS2 and PS1 era, which I used to do, and it's sometimes work. That could be a good cleaning kit, who knows. Now where to find all these video games? Go to video game shops in a local area. Also eBay sometimes has some good stuff, or Mercari also has some pretty nice stuff. Amazon used as well, usually has some pretty good things listed. You just have to be aware and be quick on the button of when to get it. You just have to be on the website real quick. Another company would be Movie Trading Company, that's a very popular one. Or if you have a blockbuster in your area, I know that's not anywhere in the world except one place, but good luck. Wait to buy, because you don't know if you're going to find a better deal or a better price. And also, you may find a video game that has some damage to it and then you find a better one. Such as when I was looking for a Silent Hill video game, there was bad water damage on the cover art. And I was like, well, I'll buy some cover art instead on the opposite side because you are able to buy the booklet and cover art separately. But then I just decided not to get it and then I found a better deal. So there you go. You never know what you may find. Just like chocolate. Also when you're looking at a console or a video game, make sure it's authentic. Maybe there's a sticker that it has or maybe it has a certain plastic. There's a lot of fake Game Boy Advance video games and Game Boy video games as well and Nintendo 64. A lot of cartridge video games are fake. So just be aware and do your research of what you may be getting a hold of. So when you're buying a video game, buying a disc can save you a lot of money but then you also have to get the case and you have to get the cover art and you also have to get booklet itself. So just be aware that it can be a pain in the butt if you want to go through that whole process. Or you can just buy a bulk package on a good deal and then be done with it. Don't overdo your spending. Even though you may find some great nostalgic video games or great deals. Unless you want to. It's really up to you. It's really up to your money. If you find some good deals, just buy a bunch and then don't buy for a while play those video games or resell them and get something better. Just look on video game websites of the value of a video game. Maybe it jumps substantially or maybe it just went downhill from so forth. Some things to see when you're looking at a video game online being sold. CIB or complete in box aka complete means that the whole thing is complete with what you're getting, such as cover art, the video game, all that jazz. Just be aware of what you're looking at. Full set is another one. Every game available for a console. Graded is another one, which has been thoroughly inspected. And the video game is actually very good in value. Loose is another one. Not like the ladies down the corner or the men down the corner. Only the game, no manual or cover art. It's just a video game. So just be careful of that. Even if the video game is scratched, you never know. Not for resale. Sometimes rare disc and cartridges made specifically for demo kiosk and retailers. They also may be games that come to the console bundles, such as a demo disc. So just be aware that it may not be the value that you are wanting or the video game itself. Repro is another one. It's a reproduced version of the video game, such as I was talking about before with Game Boy Advance cartridges and N64. Be careful, you Sherlock Holmes you. Shovelware, a poorly made game with few sales and little to no marketing. Snipe, I am the countdown for an item in an online auction placing a bid literally the last second. Now sniping isn't necessarily on an item, but this happens a lot with eBay items. So just be aware, 
if you place an order for an item and you're waiting on a bid, just keep an eye on it because I've placed a couple orders on some stuff and I was sniped in the last couple minutes. So just be aware of refreshing your page. Why fold is another one. A type of folding in plastic wrapping with sticky residue on the top and bottom part of a case that indicates game is factory sealed, which is excellent. Especially if you want to resell. I think I saw a Super Mario video game that sold for over 10 grand. That was brand spanking new. I don't know why you'd want to buy that. Maybe a, I guess a collector. But just be aware of why it's valued at that certain price. Even if somebody values a video game at a high price, they may be overcompensating of what they're actually selling and they may be thinking, oh, it's Asian video game selling to American, even though the American version is way more priced or a Europe version is way more priced. So just be aware of the rating code on the video game itself, such as mature rating, everyone, which is for everyone, teen for teenagers and all that good stuff. Just be aware of every little detail, even the cover art. A lot of European and Asian video games have different cover art than American video games. So there's a wide variety of type of video games, unless you're just collecting for video game art. Now, do you want to sit on it or sell it? It's really up to you, even with the stock market of video games. A video game that I've been wanting for a while is Jurassic Park Operation Genesis. Now that video game was up in value about $150 when Jurassic Evolution first came out and now it went back down to 40 bucks. So it's really up to you with the market. If you see a video game coming out soon such as Dead Space is coming out, you may want to buy an original copy or buy the collector's edition and then resell it in the future and you may get a really good value but I would sell it like around the time that the video game, the new version is being sold or wait a couple 20 years and then you'll be maybe well on your way with getting a good deal or you can keep it and keep replaying it. With a lot of my collecting video games, I love replaying all of my good stuff such as War of the Monsters is one of my favorites from PS2 and the rad video game as well. And then EDF is another one, PsyOps is a fantastic PS2 video game as well. So what do you think about video game collecting? Are you a collector? I have other collecting stuff, such as Pogs. I don't know if a lot of people remember that. I'm sure younger generations, such as 30 year olds, would understand Pogs. It was basically gambling for children. I think I may do actually a history and a deep dive on that one. Let me know in the comments down below, what's your favorite video game to collect? Do you think it's worth value? Do you like to play the video games you collect or do you just like playing video games?